Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. The first thing is spacing, and that's one of the unique things about the hybrid uh, attack motion offense is the way we space the floor. So a lot of teams, and I was this way, um, when we ran a lot of motion, we ran a little bit more high motion, and that's great when you have a dominant post player. But what we want to do with our hybrid attack motion is open up gaps. And so you'll see our spacing might be a little bit different um, in the way we run this. So what I'm going to start off doing is, is talk about the spacing of the offense, uh, a couple of the main principles, which is we want to keep the middle open. That, that's uh, principle number two. Uh, that's going to help us with the hybrid as far as when we get into our motion principles and also when we get into the dribble drive principles. Um, the, the last element and the, and the main element is we've got to maintain spacing and we've got to have that attack mentality at all times. So we're going to start off, like I said, with spacing. Um, as you can see, we have five guys already spaced pretty well out here. Our point guard, we are right-handed, um, so we normally do come down the floor on the right-hand side. We have our point guard, Trey, here in the slot. Uh, we don't want him too far over on the wing. Uh, we may initiate our break up the sideline a little bit more if we can initiate on that, on that pass, but we want him moving into this slot area where he can go in both directions. We have Aaron here in a trail position. He's gonna stay wide and behind the basketball um, and opening up this gap. We have uh, Hunter over here, our two sides. So this is the two side of the floor. That's the three side of the floor. We have our two in the deep corner. Once again, trying to keep this gap as wide as possible. Um, that'll give driving lanes. It's harder to help. It's harder to help whether we're in the motion element or whether we're in the dribble drive attack element. Um, we have Dallas over here. We want him a little bit up, not buried in the corner. Since he's away from the ball on this wing, we want him up in what we call a window. So we talk a lot about windowing up. Um, you need to find a window. A lot of times players will get buried and they will be buried behind the help and so there is no vision between him and the ball. We want to have vision in sight so that he's always finding an open spot or a window. Our post player, we want him away from the ball. And this, like I said, is going to get into the elements where it will open up cuts for our, for our motion. It'll open up the driving opportunities too. So we want him away from the ball, off the block, and we want him with chest to the basketball. All right, we want him down here. Now, there will be opportunities for our post players to post up at times. Um, for the most part though, we want to still create that space. We'll do our post ups uh, more on quick hitting and, and flash elements and off cuts. So we're going to keep him spaced there. So the kick up's going to be remembering that Trey, our point guard, is in attack mode. He's in attack mentality. Trey's attacking toward the rim. He wants to get all the way to the rack if he can. We're in space right now. Okay. Now if he gets stopped, the one thing that we want to work on, like I said, is the kick up. And this is a little bit different. Primarily, a lot of times, teams get into a, just a, a simple drive and kick situation. And that's fine. We will do that within our offense. One nice thing about the kick up, and what we're going to have Hunter do is instead of staying dead set in the corner, we're going to have him move. And he's going to start with a sprint step. So we always want to sprint to create quicker space. We don't want him sliding. And then you can see that he's already getting his shoulders square to the rim. We want him to get in a position where he can shoot and he can drive. One of the elements that we talked about already was that we want to create long closeouts and big gaps in our offense. Well, with Hunter spacing as he did, instead of staying in the corner, if, if Hunter's defender helps on Trey, if Hunter stays in the corner, I can stunt and I can still get to Hunter a little bit easier. With the kick up, what that allows us to do is off help, I am now, if I help, Hunter's gone, that's further for me to go. Now I'm in a long closeout. Trey's going to kick to Hunter on this if he's stopped. Now I'm in long closeout. Hunter has two things that he can still do. Attack could be, I'm shooting, okay? 
But the other attack could be, I'm gonna get downhill off this long closeout. So same spots, but our kickback is gonna be where Trey hits the middle gap. So he's hitting the middle. Once again, the mentality has to be, I'm not going side to side. I am trying to get to the rim. Now, as Trey's going here, once again, we said, if we dribble at our post player, what's our post need to do? Exactly right. So Cade's doing a great job of already relocating. What are you gonna do, Dallas? You got you gotta find your window, right? So it could be right where you're at. It could be down there. Our kickback is gonna be you coming behind. So Aaron's gonna come behind. We always wanna keep a six to eight foot gap. The larger it can be, the better to combat switching and to also give a little bit more of a downhill attack element. Because remember, every time we do an attack, we wanna follow it with another attack. And so Trey's done the initial attack. Aaron's coming behind six to eight feet. And here's one other teaching point. We'll get into this a little bit later too, is that we do not want to do a negative kickback or a negative kick up. And what a negative kickback or a kick up would be, Trey, get the ball again. We want our guy coming behind to be at least even with, which would be about there or beyond where Trey is with the basketball. The reason being is if you think about where help would be, if I'm helping here on Trey and I'm Aaron's guy, and we kick back in a negative way, say Aaron's in, the, in there, what we call as a negative, and this is what we don't want, I can recover to this. That's very easy to recover too. If Aaron gets even with or beyond and I'm in help, now we kick back here, I've got to go through Trey or now I'm in a trail mode. Or my other option is I go below and hopefully we can knock some of these shots down because that's something we want in our offense. We want threes and we want things getting to the rack and we want free throws. I mean, they, those are our three main things that we're looking for. Will we take a mid-range jump shot at times? Absolutely, we'll take it with certain guys and we'll define that for them. But the three main things that we are looking for is number one, layups, number two, threes, and really not even number three, but just a secondary thing is we wanna to get to the free throw line. Those are the three best things uh, when you look at analytics. That's gonna make us the most successful at the offensive end. I often get asked, what is the hybrid motion attack offense? Well, it's a combination between two tried and two true systems that have been excellent over the years uh, and been in many gyms. One is the motion offense and one is the dribble drive attack offense. Um, I spent time over my career running both and, and I ran them separately. Um, and I loved them both. We got a lot of great things out of both offenses. I, I was always trying to figure out a way to, to better it though and uh, to find something um, for when we got stuck. We seem to get stuck in both offenses at times. Uh, with the dribble drive offense, um, it's so attack oriented and it's great with, with situations off the bounce and the reactions to penetration. And I wanted to keep our teams in that attack mindset. At the same time, when we were shut down or we weren't being as aggressive or teams guarded that well, sometimes we didn't have th things to go to. And at those times, I thought we needed some, some screening and some of the motion concepts. On the other hand, when we taught motion, sometimes we would get into the situation where we would stagnate a little bit. We would just get playing catch on the, on the perimeter or it would just be curl after curl or things like that. And I felt like we needed to get that attack mindset. And I thought we needed some rules within our attack mindset off the bounce. Well, after years and years of kind of going back and forth between the two, we finally settled on what is now the hybrid attack offense. Since fully converting to the hybrid attack offensive system six years ago, we've made it to the state semifinals in Iowa five out of the last six years. We've won the state title two times in 2018 and 2019. And this past year, we led in several offensive categories, including most points scored in, in uh, game average, uh, assists per game, effective field goal percentage, field goal percentage, and three-point percentage. Those categories are very impressive, and I'm very proud of all of them, but the one that stands out to me is the assists per game. 
I think you can attribute a lot of the other categories to not only our hybrid attack offensive system, but we've had a lot of great players go through here that have done a tremendous job. But with the assist per game, that says something about our style of play. And I think that's what the hybrid attack offensive system has done for us. It shows that we are able to share the ball, score in multiple ways, and score against different defenses and different types of defenses. All right, so one of the common uh, things to do against motion offense is to switch. And it's a thing that we see a lot uh, at our level, and you see that a lot at, the, at a variety of levles, including junior high, high school, college, MBA. MBA. Um, we're going to get in a four-out situation. We're going to look at this live and look at how we attack the switch. So the first way we attack the switch is to use the slip and seal. So what we're going to do on this with this concept is we're going to be in our motion concepts right here. Now, the nice thing about the, the hybrid motion is through the dribble drive, if you're doing your, your kickups and your kickbacks and you're spacing the floor uh, correctly and you're creating some of the gaps, that's a tremendous way to beat the switch anyways. So if we're, if we're doing that, you can beat it off the drive. But here's some other techniques, especially out of the motion. So one is going to be to slip. So if we pass away, and that's a passive pass. We're going to take our step, Tanner. We're going to get a good angle going down. We're spacing the floor. We still have our empty area in the lane line. We're going to set this screen. We're going to look to slip it. Okay. And once again, ball side post is open. And so with ball side post being open, those slips should be here. If Cade's all the way in here, if this help defenders in, what should you be able to do? You should have an open man over here. So those are part of the reads. But the other thing that we want to do, say we have a, a bigger guy. So say we're going to have you, Jake, you're setting the screen up here. Let's say we're in this situation. You got the ball. You have the ball right now, OK? You pass, and you go screen away. Now you might be into, you can slip, but you also might be into a seal. So what you might do on their, on their switch, you're going to just seal, OK? and really seal hard and, and come back to the ball, okay? Because remember, we're keeping this block area open. We should have shooter ready to shoot in the corner in case they help. And those are two techniques that we're going to use. So let's go through that live a couple times. Um, we can just go back and forth with it and just see what we get. All right, here we go. Good. Flip. Good. And we just want to get the ball deep, okay? Let's get the situation that we just had a second ago with the big. So instead of slipping on this one, now here's, here's a big key though. When we go to set these screens, if I'm going to seal, I want to set it on the bottom side of him, okay? If I set it up here on this side of him, our defender can just slip right under the bottom and beat me to the spot. I want to get to the underside so when I seal, I've got him in a bad position, okay? So make sure we get that good angle. Here we go. Start the ball here. Let's get a seal now on the, on the switch. Start. Good, good, good job, good. And then we'll just kick and work. All right, time, time, that's fine, that's fine. So what we would do though, we would continue to try to go to that mismatch. So that's what they might do though. They might double in and that's where we need to, to attack accordingly or get our shot. But we're gonna continue to try to evaluate and get the ball inside or get the ball to those slips. Now we can continue. But once we get a post mismatch, something we like, we'd really like to go to that, okay? If it's guards out here, we'll just continue to play in motion. So if we're just going to go, let's just go into slips and take what they get. It slips and seals the whole way through this possession, all right? Go until you get something. If you don't get it, that's fine. That's fine. Good. Go play. Got to space out. Good. There's your slip. Good. But you got to get out quick. Got to get out quick. There you go. Good. Good. Not too bad. All right? So that is just a couple of simple ways. Um, it's, it's kind of a tried and true thing that a lot of people do. You can run them out of set, uh, set plays, but you can also run them directly out of our offense. <laughs>